And now we're joined by Ron Madison in Tokyo. Hi there, Ron. It looked like Japanese stocks might push the rally into a second day, but after a volatile session, the Nikkei finished lower. Tell us more. Yeah, hi there, Guan Xin. You hit on uh, some of the main points there. We got the morning started off very much on an up note. Uh, you know, there was optimism after U.S. shares and oil markets jumped overnight. Uh, strength for the yen, though, really capped the gains that we were seeing. Uh, it's about six tenths of a percent stronger against the greenback in that lower 112 range. Now, at one point uh, in the afternoon, the dollar briefly fell below 112. The yen was also stronger against other rivals. In fact, it hit multi year highs against the euro and the British pound as uh, fresh Brexit. Concerns and uh, weakness in Asian stocks prompted investors uh, to really look for the safety of the yen. Exporters, of course, uh, feeling the pinch on that. We had both Sony and Suzuki uh, lower today, making for more of a mixed day, though. Steelmakers and some resource linked shares rose as investors uh, did cheer the some 7% gain that we saw for oil markets overnight. Uh, as you mentioned, a picture of volatility started to develop again, though. Brent is down uh, just about 2%, still managing, though, to hold above 34 dollars a barrel. So we saw some very nice gains for the likes of JFE Holdings. It was up 5.7 percent. Mitsui uh, Mining and Smelting gained six and a quarter, while Toho Zinc was up uh, six percent. Now these shares were among the best performers today on the Nikkei. Guan Xin. And Ron, the dollar yen flirted with 111 levels earlier in the afternoon session. Is that raising expectations about more easing by the BOJ? Yeah, it seems uh, that it is. You know, as long as the rising yen continues to threaten corporate earnings, some market watchers are saying that the BOJ may have no choice but to move rates further into negative territory, possibly at its next meeting in March. Uh, Kyohei Morita at Barclays says as long as the yen remains stronger than 115 uh, to the dollar, the BOJ will have to ease again. Now, uh, some are guessing, though, that because of the huge impact that we saw on the banking industry, uh, the BOJ might stand pat. Mizuhu Bank's Daisuke Karakama, though, has an interesting take. As he put it, uh, the BOJ has taken a perilous path of catering to market expectations. So some fresh easing at this point uh, might give the impression that the BOJ is on the defensive. Now, with the prospects dimming for a Fed rate hike, the BOJ may find it very difficult to stop this rising yen. Guan Qing. And let's talk about the worst performer of the day. Seems the bad news keeps coming in for troubled air bag maker Takata. What's the latest? Yeah, you know, a very uh, serious uh, situation potentially uh, for Takata. We're hearing that the number of recalled airbags in the U.S. could balloon anywhere from 70 million up to as high as 90 million. Now, that would uh, pretty much quadruple the 29 million inflators that have been recalled so far, and it would basically amount to a recall of all 120 million inflators sold in the U.S. that use uh, the chemical ammonium nitrate in the inflators. Now, uh, that volatile chemical has been blamed for rupturing inflators, causing them to explode with such a force that it sprays metal shrapnel at uh, the occupants in the car. Takata has since discontinued using that chemical. A source uh, told Reuters, though, that there are concerns that quality failures at Takata's North American inflator plants may, uh, you know, just make it difficult to pinpoint which of the tens of millions of inflators actually pose a risk to the public. So uh, a recall on this scale uh, obviously could end up costing the company billions of dollars and add uh, years to the replacement process. Takata, as you mentioned, uh, sharply lower today. It was down 4.3 percent. Guan Xin, that is uh, how things are looking in Tokyo. Back to you. Thank you very much. Real Medicine live for us in Tokyo.